Welcome to episode 24. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and you're listening to Who Did That Voice, where we take an in-depth look at voiceovers. The holiday season is upon us, and there is no time like the present to book your holiday getaway with 3D Travel Company. Whether you want to set sail on the high seas or visit exotic and foreign locales, Maybe your dream is to see a magical mouse, or maybe you long for a getaway that will universally appeal to all. For a limited time, my listeners receive a Disney gift card with qualifying Disney vacation purchases booked and traveled by the end of 2016. For more information on booking any of these trips, go to 3dtravelcompany.com and tell them Trenton sent you. Welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at voiceover. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today's special guest got his first taste of voiceover by playing on a radio drama produced by The Ceiling Fan. He's done commercials audiobooks for personal and gifting ideas for his family and friends, and he's also done other projects as well, such as compose the theme song for my podcast. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Who Did That Voice? Today on the show, we have a very special guest, Garrett Vandenberg. Garrett, thank you so much for joining us today, man. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. Man, it's my pleasure. So, Garrett, the very first thing we always like to do when we start out with a new guest is just to get a brief background on who they are as an individual and how did they get into the voiceover industry. So, a little bit about me. I uh, I grew up on the road playing music with my uh, with my parents, just like pretty much any kid. You know, I had a pretty regular life. I always just traveled around, living in a in a bus, playing gospel music for most of my life. I, I guess not a lot of kids have done that, but that, that's, that's what I grew up <laughs> doing, anyways. Uh, when I was really young, actually, we traveled with my grandparents, and we yeah we would sing like southern gospel music all around. So that that was my first exposure to uh, any sort of live performance or just performance at all. I was playing drums uh, for my family band, and from there, kind of my dad took over the ministry eventually, and they eventually wanted me to make they they wanted me to start singing along with everybody, and I was not super fond of that idea, but. After some uh, some strong encouragement, and by that I mean I was forced to, I <laughs> ended up having to learn how to sing on stage. So f from there, I guess I just kind of uh, got more into performing. I mean, I, I started playing my own songs, writing my own songs, and that was actually what led me to get into podcasting a little bit. I was a really big fan of this show called The Ceiling Fan Podcast because I was a really big fan of this other show called Adventures in Odyssey. The guy who ran that, his name is Kevin McCurry, and I had done this... Uh, uh, a guitar cover of the Adventures in Odyssey theme song, and he thought it was awesome. So he made me join the team of the ceiling, or he invited me to join the team of the ceiling fan. I was thrilled to join, and from there I started to make music for the show. And he asked me if I would like to play a character as well, and I was pretty thrilled about that too because I really liked the show, and obviously I wanted to be on it. So I bought I, my my parents and I bought a mic together, and I start actually that's that's the mic I'm currently talking into. It's still my favorite mic to use. That's awesome. Uh, but I got a mic and I started uh, I started playing a character in that show called Aaron Wiley. And I was pretty bad. I was uh, admittedly when I started, I was pretty bad. I'm still not a great actor, <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I know how to I at least know how to talk. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's a little bit about how I got into my life and uh, how I got, got exposed a little bit to voice acting. Well, Garrett, I know your first interactions with voiceover were with Kevin McCreary's show on The Ceiling Fan, and I know that you've also become the voice of Voice 123. How did all that come about? Okay, well, actually, let me correct you there really quick, because as, as far as for the voice of 123, I'm not the official, like, the voice of, like, vo Garrett's voice, 123. But um, I, I signed up for, for this voiceover website a little while ago, because I was hoping to try and pick up some voiceover jobs. I figured it'd be another great way to make some money. Hopefully I could get a few jobs because I had done a few things with voiceover in the past. So I made an account and then I realized that on the website, 
just with a free account, it doesn't really help you actually get any voiceover jobs. And I was a little bummed about that. But the uh, one of the administrators of the site, I guess, uh, looked at my voice promo and, and, and they liked my, my, the sound of my voice and what I was doing. And so they invited me as well as a few other people to try out to, um, to do the voice for one of their tutorials. And the t- original tutorial was how to upload a, uh, an audition for on voice one, two, three. And I did an audition and I just kind of, I didn't really think much of it. I, I recorded it and I just did a little bit of editing that night. And, uh, unfortunately when I threw on, I threw on a master compressor cause I knew it didn't needed to meet a certain volume level. And I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing. And I turned it up a little bit too loud to the point where when my voice hit the master compressor, it, it kind of distorted a little bit. So I sent this in not even knowing what had gone wrong, but I it screwed up the audio quality a little bit. And so when they were reviewing it, I, I guess they liked the sound of my performance as far as my voice, but uh, the distortion, and I think there was a little bit of a reverb that shouldn't have been there too. So they, they ended up not choosing me for that. So I didn't hear back from them or anything. I was just like, I assumed I didn't get the job. But then, fast forward a few months, I got another email from that same admin, and she said, hey, Garrett, we really liked your voice when you uh, originally tried out, but the, we couldn't use it because of audio issues. But we are, we're now doing another tutorial video, and we're not asking anybody else to try out. We'd really like you to do it, but we just need to make sure that the uh, audio quality meets par. There's no reverb and there's no distortion. And I was like, great. So I recorded it, and they, uh, and they used it. Wow, that's a fascinating story. I, I guess I thought you were the official voice, but um, you've done a voice for many of the right. voices before Voice 1, 2, 3. <laughs> yeah. awesome. I'm one of the many Voice 1, 2, 3 voices. That's awesome, man. That's a, that's a great story. Uh, well, would you tell us, I know you've also uh, taken it upon yourself to actually produce some works that were already created, um, such as the story, the true story of the three little pigs. What encouraged you to produce this and turn it into an audiobook? Well, that's one actually not a lot of people have heard. And the reason being, a while, I mean, I always really appreciated uh, going to the library when I was a little kid. And there was always or there was a lot of um, books you could get with CDs in the back or tapes. Yeah. And they would read the book to you. And I just I thought it was great because, you know, if I couldn't read or even sometimes I just really liked the narrator. One of my favorite narrators ever was a guy named Robert Munch. He's just an incredible storyteller, story reader. Like he, he gets so into it and it's hilarious. And so I always really loved um even sometimes doing almost an impersonation of Robert Muncher. I just really liked reading books aloud to my younger siblings. And so I recently just graduated Bible college, but obviously I was going away to Bible college a few years ago, and I used to be able to read stories to my youngest sister a lot, but I obviously wasn't going to be able to do that anymore when I was in, living in a different state. So I decided for her birthday that year I would record her my own audiobook so she could still have me read her stories. And orig- the first book I ever did with that with was called... Um, Edward Fuddwhooper fibbed big. And I think I still have that file somewhere. If not, it's on a CD at least. And I really liked the way it turned out. I had a lot of fun making it. And then I kind of just decided that I would I would do this yearly because it was it was more of a personal present. And I really liked the way they turned out. She loved listening to them. So then the next year I made a I recorded an audio book with uh, of this book called The Last Basilope, which is a really funny book as well. Also by the same writer as uh, Edward Fudwhopper did big. Those are two of my favorite kids' stories. But I wanted to do another one for her this year, and I didn't really know what book to do, so I just kept my eyes open at some different garage sales, and I finally picked up this book that I remembered actually reading with one of my friends as a kid as well, and it was called The, the True Story of the Three Little Pigs, and it's a really funny story. It's the three little pigs, but told from the perspective of the wolf, the big bad wolf, and uh, I thought it was a hilarious book, and it gave me a good opportunity to do some funny voices. So I recorded that one for her again this year, and again, it, it was a lot of fun to make, and it, it turned out pretty well. So I'm, I'm thinking in the future I might like to try and see if there are any authors out there who would be willing to hire me to record, uh, like to do narration on their books. But so far, it's just been kind of a, a hobby slash um, gift for my little sister. Well, that is a most fascinating story because I myself remember listening to records with the books, you know, and then cassette tapes and CDs and everything as it evolved. But I always loved listening along with a story or my mom would read with me. And and so I know those those are very special. And I know your sister has to absolutely love that because it's so personal from you, you know? Yeah, Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I know through the course of your voiceover career, you've also worked with a company called Global Efficient Energy. And how did you end up getting to do a commercial for them as well? Well, one of my biggest, and I really, really appreciate this job, but one of my biggest jobs has led to a lot of my 
previous clients has been uh, my opportunity to work with Blimey Cow. A while ago, I got to write a video with them and do some music for them. And since then, they've been using a lot of my music. And obviously, I've made some more stuff from them since then. And uh, because of the help I, I gave them, they posted a link to my website and, uh, and a few other things underneath pretty much all of their videos since then. So I've had tons of clients come in through them. And one of those being, uh, actually, no, I don't think this was directly through Blimey Cow, but it was, I, I had had a client, and then through that client who liked my services, he referenced me to somebody else. This guy had been hired by the company, Global Efficient Energy. He had been hired to basically just to market them a little bit better. So he was working on some other stuff, but he wanted to do a radio ad, but didn't have the production material and skills to do it himself. And so he remembered uh, working with me previously, and so he called me, or he sent me an email. I was like, hey, I'm doing this job. Could you help out? I'll, uh, I'll pay you. I'll pay you for it. <laughs> I was like, sure, I'm always down for paid work. Absolutely. Um, it wasn't super specific as to what was supposed to happen. And so I sent him a few different things and we kind of back and forth a little bit. Eventually, I ended up writing a, a little jingle for this company. And I think it turned out hilarious. I'll, I'll make sure I send you a copy of that commercial so you can play it because it's, it's a pretty funny commercial. Most excellent. I would love that. Yeah. So um, anyway, the, the commercial turned out great. And we were originally going to be doing a, a commercial for TV as well. And then the company was like, eh, we've already spent enough money on this. We're not going to do the TV thing. So he and I were both a little bummed about that. But uh, I was happy to at least have been able to do the uh, the commercial. But yeah, in the commercial, I uh, I was kind of the radio announcer voiced kind of guy. And then I also did some funny singing in there. Well, that is definitely an excellent story, man. I know any opportunity, like you said, to get paid to do what you love. Right on. Bring it on, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, Garrett, one thing I always like to ask our voice actors and those that are in the industry is what kind of advice would you give to someone who might be interested in pursuing a voiceover career? Well, as somebody who is not exactly pursuing uh, a career in voice acting, but I mean, it's something I kind of do in order to make some money here and there, I would encourage somebody who really wants to take it seriously to, to do that, to take it seriously. But I, I would encourage, I mean, the way I started out, and I really, I feel like that's a good way for a lot of people to start out, is to just begin to create content. We, we live again, like I was saying, we, we live in a time where it's, it's easy to just download a program and be able to start recording. Whether you've got a crappy computer mic, you can make stuff. That's, I mean, back when I, uh, I did my first little, uh, Adventures in Odyssey theme song guitar cover, I'm pretty sure I recorded that with a, uh, just some plug-in mic on the side of my computer. No, no preamp or interface. And I did it on Audacity, which is a free recording program you can download. You can make stuff. You don't, I mean, everybody now has got a, got a Mac. You got GarageBand on it. That's a pretty, I mean, it's still a free program. It doesn't, doesn't quite compare to the, the industry standard, but you can make some pretty good stuff on GarageBand if you spend the time to fool around with it. So if you want to be podcasting, if you want to be doing voiceover, if you want to make skits, if you just want to be using your voice, do it. Start a podcast. I mean, you, it may not lead to a jillion people listening to your podcast every day, but it'll lead to some experience. It'll lead to something you can show people say, hey, I, I made this. And I think that's a lot of times what people are looking for when they're creating things is they want to find proactive people who actually are going to make stuff. Absolutely. So people that are just pursuing their dreams, no matter what, you know, if you've got five listeners or 500 or a thousand, at least you're pursuing something because you have a passion for it. Right. And doing it and trying to actually have fun with it, you know? Absolutely. I totally agree with you, Garrett. Well, are there any current projects that you're working on for the voiceover side of things? Or are you writing music for any kind of commercials or anything at this time? I do have a few uh, music jobs lined up. As far as voiceover, I'm not pursuing that side too, too hard right now. I'm thinking, like I said, I was, I was thinking of trying to contact some different uh, either authors or possibly publishers to see if I could work out any deals doing um, reading books because I feel like that would be a really fun thing to do. I guess I am, um, I guess I, I am using my voice for uh, some podcasts as well, though, which I wanted to mention. Uh, right now, I'm uh, leading on the team with uh, the Odyssey Scoopcast. We try to do uh, interviews and reviews about that show, Adventures in Odyssey, where we will interview other uh, you know, actors or, um, or producers from the show and whatnot. And so uh, if you want to check that out, you can hear more of my voice. That's odysseyscoopcast.com. Well, Garrett, thanks so much for sharing that with us today, man. Okay, so that's called the odysseyscoopcast.com, correct? Right, the first time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Garrett. Well, Garrett, do you have a website or some way that you can be contacted if people are interested in using you for voiceover talent or having you write their music for maybe a YouTube show or a podcast? 
Absolutely. And yeah, I can handle all the, everything from music to voiceover. I can even write your commercial for you or write a song to go for your commercial. But yeah, if you want to contact me, you can go to voice123.com slash Garrett Vandenberg. That's voice123, just the numbers, not, not words, the numbers, dot com uh, slash G-A-R-R-E-T-T-V-A-N-D-E-N-B-E-R-G. Or you can go to my website at GarrettVandenberg.com. All right, Garrett. Thanks so much for sharing that with us today, man. Before I let you go, I have two final questions for you. The first one is, what is your favorite cartoon or cartoon show from growing up and why? My current favorite cartoon character is probably, uh, it's a toss up right now because my two favorite cartoons, I think, are uh, The Amazing World of Gumball and Harvey Beaks. And I really like this character, Harvey Beaks. He's this, this cute little bird and he really, really reminds me of my, my roommate. He's, he's a hilarious character because he always gets himself into these conundrums because he's too nice and too unwilling to do anything that might even be perceived as wrong. He just wants to be the best possible, nicest person he can be. And it ends up backfiring on him. And it's just it's, it's hilarious. I love that. <laughs> the other character I really like is, um, <laughs> well, actually, it's. These, these two shows I really like because they remind me of the dynamic between, between me and my roommate. And I, I don't know why that just makes me laugh so much. But yeah, the other show I really like is The Amazing World of Gumball. And it's the, these two main characters, Gumball and Darwin. And I always imagine myself as Gumball and my roommate is Darwin because they're, they're also very similar characters. <laughs> well, it's good. You know, I think the, uh, the animators do try to make shows that people kind of correlate with and relate to so that oh, yeah. they do kind of get sucked into it and feel no, more. They, they really did a great job with, with both of those shows. <laughs> they, they, uh, they, they must've been me. studying you guys. They followed you two around and made that show <laughs> exactly. right off of you guys. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Garrett, the last question I have for you today is what is your favorite Disney movie and why? Now, is this, animated disney movie or just disney movie typically animated but it could be a regular disney movie too okay well i really like the princess bride i think that's is that technically disney no maybe it's not disney we'll skip that i think i think my favorite disney animated film is probably again a toss-up between aladdin and atlantis oh most excellent choice. and no i didn't just go like to the list of animated movies and check Check the top two A <laughs> titles. Those actually are. <laughs> I realize they both start with A, but no, I I really like both of those movies. Well, Al- Aladdin's always been one of my favorite. That and Robin Hood. So I'm right there with you, man. But Atlantis was I a really good. I can one. show you the world. <laughs> Shining, shimmering, splendid. Wow, are we gonna do a duet here? A <laughs> <laughs> new world, a new fanta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no problem man that's one of my favorite songs I, I, by the way i'm sorry that I, I got that last note flat i haven't warmed up i, I could have done better oh, your girly voice sorry. is almost there man <laughs> <laughs> oh you should see when my siblings gonna when my siblings and i get together we love to pull out the karaoke and jam some disney classics oh man i bet that's a blast <laughs> Well, Garrett, it has been an absolute honor and pleasure having you on the show today. Would you please just give us a closeout? Well, thanks for listening. You're listening to Who Did That Voice? Can you guess who did it? We'll see you next time on Who Did That Voice? Goodbye, folks. (laughs) Hey, everyone. I hope you enjoyed my episode today with Garrett Vandenberg. And if you did please stop on by my contact me page at www.whodidthatvoice.co or .org. I'd love to hear from you. Well, everyone, that's all the time we have for this episode. Join us this Friday for our next special guest, David Fielding, who has voiced the most more phenomenal and cosmic power in the universe, Zordon from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. You won't want to miss this episode. Hey, are you ready to win some awesome prizes? All you have to do is like our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter for your chance to be instantly and automatically entered for your chance to win. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time for more discoveries on Who Did That Voice?